In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, conception died with Christ and rose with him to a new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. In life, Consumption cherishes the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. <clears throat> In baptism, Conception received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Let us pray. 
God of endless ages from one generation to the next, you had been our refuge and strength. Before the mountains were born or the earth came to be, you are God. Have mercy now on your servant Concepcion, whose long life was spent in your service. Give her a place in your kingdom where hope is firm for all who love and rest is sure for all who serve. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, O distant people. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arms. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, reclining with his disciples, grew deeply troubled. He went on to give this testimony. I tell you solemnly, one of you will betray me. The disciples look at one another, puzzled as to whom he could mean. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, reclined close to him as they ate. Simon Peter signaled him to ask Jesus whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Lord, who is he? Jesus answered, The one to whom I give the bit of food I dip in the dish. He dipped the morsel, then took it and gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. Immediately after, Satan entered his heart. Jesus addressed himself to him, be quick about what you are to do. Naturally, none of those reclining at table understood why Jesus said this to him. A few had the idea that since Judas had a common purse, Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. No sooner had Judas eaten the morsel than he went out. It was night. Once Judas had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will, in turn, glorify him to himself and will glorify him soon. My son, I am not to be with you much longer. You will look at me, but I say to you now what I once said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. Lord, said Simon Peter to him, where do you mean to go? Jesus answered, I'm going where you cannot follow me now. Later on, you shall come after me. Lord, Peter said to him, Why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. You will lay down your life for me, will you? Jesus answered, I tell you truly, the cock will not crow before you have three times disowned me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us all be seated. Today is Tuesday of Holy Week and the day we will accompany the mortal remains of Sister Chit Concepcion to the grave. Brother Joe Feria and Sister Chit were one of the first members of the community and they had remained always with the community from the beginning up to their own end. 
The community is one who is supposed to put into practice the life of Christ in our hope to go to heaven. And therefore, like all true Christians, we have to undergo Holy Week, which some great theologians like St. Bonaventure had described as the sixth day. And so theologians, like the fathers of the church, has described the entire life of a Christian, not so much in many words, but in one word called the sixth day. And that sixth day is symbolized by Good Friday. Now, Good Friday is before Saturday, commonly referred to as the Sabbath. And so, the life of a Christian is always like the life of the children of the Sabbath because all of them are desirous to enter the rest of the Lord called the Sabbath, which today, of course, we celebrate on Sundays. But during the time of Christ, it was Saturday. And so when the community was first established, it was the beginning of the sixth day, which in reality is the beginning of Holy Week, Palm Sunday. That is one whole week, but described by the fathers of the church as the sixth day. And if you will notice, the Holy Week begins with Christ being welcomed with palms, just as the beginning of the community was welcomed with palms, but immediately condemned to death. And so, if you will notice, all of the Sunday Gospels and the weekday Gospels during this Lenten season is about the entire Jerusalem led by the scribes and the Pharisees planning to kill Jesus Christ. And so from the very beginning of the community, we see efforts continuously to suppress or to kill the community. And Brother Joe and Sister Chit were part of the community from the beginning. And they were in the forefront of the battle, in the forefront. They were leading the battle like good soldiers. And so the greatest accusation that the Pharisees and the scribe had towards Jesus Christ was that he was from the devil. And so people were saying the same thing. They are not Catholics. But how can they be not Catholics when their members and their defender are well known as staunch Catholic and very good Catholic justice of the Supreme Court 
of the Philippines. It does not make sense. How can a couple known to be staunch Catholics and defenders of the Catholic Church could be member of a group that is not being described as Catholic. And so they could really not understand. They could not understand because the presence of Brother Joe and Chit were the greatest refutation of their accusation. And indeed, those who were accusing were more non-Catholic than the Catholics. Of course, like the apostles and like the first Christians, there were many things Brother Joe and Sister Chit could not understand. We also, there are many things we don't understand in the Catholic Church because the teachings of the Catholic Church cannot be understood by anybody unless Christ explains it to them. And so the apostles during the Lenten season could not understand many things why Christ had to do and had to allow himself to be crucified and die. They could not understand that. Why Christ, the Son of God, had to put himself under the power of evil man, they could not understand that. And even we today cannot understand why we have to leave the world in order to enter God's rest on the Sabbath. But like holy apostles, when they cannot understand anything or something with regard to the Catholic faith, they are humble and admit the fact that they don't understand because they do not have grace. And that's the only reason why we cannot understand. And like humble, holy people, when they don't understand, they pray and they wait until God himself explains it to them. And that is what they did. Up to the end of their lives, they had questions just as the apostles, even up to Saturday, the eve of Easter, were asking questions. Why is the tomb empty? And then, humbly, they would wait for the answer. And so, they began with the community, and like all those who are members of the community, they left all things. They left the world, and Sister Chit herself have left the world. Even at the point of death, she could not return and could not be visited by the world, they were outside. Where were they? They were following Christ 
in their great desire to be the children of the Sabbath so that they one day would enter the rest of the Lord. Today, the sixth day continues. And maybe Brother Joe and Sister Chit does not have to see what is going in the world today. The very gospel for today shows us what is happening in the world. The scribes and the Pharisees were plotting to kill Christ. The crowd who last Sunday were yelling, Hosanna to the son of David on the sixth day would shout, crucify him. The Pharisees, the scribes, the people were being possessed by the devil. It is the sign of the sixth day. That is why Sister Jade did not want to be in the world. Because in the second temptation of Christ in the desert, it was the devil himself who pointed at the world to Christ and said, that is my kingdom. That is my kingdom. And the people there would be the subjects of Satan. And Sister Chit wouldn't want to be a part of that. And so she left it and in a symbolic way, she passed away out of that world that belonged to Satan. And so, therefore, as we celebrate this Mass, for the eternal repose of our soul, we can imagine Brother Joe whose namesake is taken from Saint Joseph. Now, with Sister Chit, whose namesake is Conception, like the Blessed Virgin Mary, resting in the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of Jesus for the praise and glory of his name, for all the evil and the beautiful of his holy church. Father in heaven, receive the gifts we offer. For the salvation that comes at John, may Christ be merciful in judging our sister, for she believe in Christ as her Lord and Savior. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do will always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord in him who rose from the dead, our hope of resurrection dawn, the sadness of death, gives way to the bright promise of immortality. Lord, with your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And so with all the choirs of angels, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise singing. And enter willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the name of the Lord and profess your resurrection and the name of God. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread to all the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity together with our Pope and our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Concepcion whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face and mercy on us so all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. O Rema, formati, Audemus dicere Pater Noster qui es in cielo Sanctificetur nomen tu Alveniat regnum tu Fia voluntas tu Sicut in cielo Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracefully grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracefully grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And the joy of spirit. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those who receive it. Lamb of God, who is in the world, Lamb of God, who is in the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Father in heaven, your Son Jesus Christ gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us on our pilgrim way to your kingdom. May our sister Concepcion, who shared in the Eucharist, come to the banquet of life Christ had prepared for us. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroy even death itself. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present Send her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. And let her Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our sister Concepcion in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessing which you bestowed upon Concepcion on this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints of Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister for ever through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. <laughs>